as we delve into sustainable industrial practices, exploring topics like wastewater treatment, water purification, solid waste management, air quality control, noise and vibration, environmental impact assessments, and the latest in environmental legislation. Whether you're a seasoned professional, an industry leader, a student, or simply someone eager to make a positive impact, you're in the right place. Together, let's pave the way to a sustainable future, one episode at a time. Uh, hi everyone, so uh, welcome you all back for another episode of our uh, video series on environment engineering. So today we will be discussing another uh, very important act uh, in Sri Lanka, um, which is uh, related to ambient uh, water quality. So it's called uh, Ambient Water Quality Act of Sri Lanka. And uh, this act was uh, enacted in 2019 and uh, it's a critical component of Sri Lanka's uh, environment regulations. Uh, it aims to ensure that the country's uh, inland surface waters maintain high quality standard suitable for various uh, uses, uh, indicating uh, drinking, uh, recreation and agriculture uh, likewise. So uh, this act outlines specific uh, standards and guidelines to control discharge of pollutants into water bodies and to safeguard public health and the environment. So uh, this uh, act uh, sets uh, forth the uh, crucial regulations to control pollution levels in inland surface waters and uh, it uh, prohibits the discharge of pollutants exceeding established ambient water quality standards and the act uh, categorizes uh, water bodies uh, based on their required quality standard ensuring specific guidelines are adhered to for drinking water recreational waters and for water for agriculture use so uh, in this act uh, we have uh, several categories so uh, category a is uh, uh, water that requires simple treatment for drinking so what is the simple treatment means uh, we will discuss it later so category b is uh, water uh, which is suitable for bathing and contact uh, recreational water and c is uh, water suitable for aquatic life and uh, d is a water source that requires to undergo a general treatment process for drinking so uh, what is this uh, general treatment process again we will discuss it uh, at the uh, uh, in the uh, next couple of minutes and uh, category e shall be water suitable for irrigation and agricultural activities and the final category would be category f uh, which is uh, water with minimum quality but does not fall into category a to e so uh, there are altogether six categories are mentioned in uh, this act. So uh, now let's uh, look uh, what this general treatment means. So uh, general treatment means treatment of water using coagulation, proculation, clarification and filtration followed by disinfection. So they, those are the general treatment steps which we normally follow for uh, drinking water treatment. So uh, general treatment means once again uh, the treatment of water using coagulation process uh, which is uh, we add uh, alum or polymer uh, alum or polyaluminum chloride uh, and we uh, coagulate the mud particles or the suspended particles and uh, flocculation and clarification means we settle down those particles and we further filter the water or further remove this uh, further remove to further remove this uh, suspended particles and finally before uh, using it we have to disinfect so this is called as general treatment and there's another term is uh, inland surface water so again inland surface water means any standing or flowing water on the surface of the land extending up to boundary of the coastal water um, and there's another term in those uh, categories called as simple treatment so simple treatment means simple filtration and boiled uh, at 100 degrees celsius simple filtration uh, and boiled at 100 degrees Celsius is called as simple treatment. So now let's uh, go into uh, the uh, the values of this uh, each category. So uh, Act has uh, uh, categorized uh, this uh, set of parameters into different categories. So under the general categories, they have listed uh, color, uh, electrical conductivity, uh, turbidity, uh, TSS, uh, total hardness, pH. Uh, dissolved oxygen, uh, biological oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand. So uh, 
what are these parameters uh, and how it works we have discussed those matters in an earlier episode and uh, so i invite you to uh, if you haven't got any idea about this uh, what are these parameters please uh, check on our previous episode and uh, so uh, for each of these parameters under each category they have listed the param uh, the values so uh, in here you can see these uh, category a and d are uh, has a lot of uh, parameter listed under this category which means category a means the simple treatment for drinking and capital uh, category d is general treatment for drinking so both of category a and d are related with uh, drinking so they have been uh, very cautious regarding this category a and d and they have listed uh, many parameters under those two categories and when come to the category b c and f uh, some of these uh, parameters were not listed for category b c and uh, uh, b, uh, b c and e and f so because uh, those are for the uh, B is for the bathing and recreational, C is for aquatic life and uh, E is for irrigation and F is the, uh, the minimum quality. So this is for the general and uh, they have listed the nutrient uh, indicators as well such as uh, nitrate and uh, ammonia. Uh, so ammonia they have uh, ammonia and phosphate. So uh, for the ammonia, um, they have listed into three categories based on the pH value. So uh, again, uh, in here, the nutrient life, uh, nutrient values are more critical for the aquatic life. So uh, under the category C, they have mentioned almost all these parameters are listed under category C, which is uh, the aquatic life. But for other para, for other categories such as A, B, D, E, and uh, for those A, B, D, and E, they have mentioned only the nitrate value because that is the most crucial value, uh, and uh, only for the aquatic life it is more critical that nutrient can lead up to uh, the eutrophication and other issues in the water bodies, and it can eventually harm the aquatic life. Uh, then the uh, they have mentioned the some other parameters in other category uh, where they have listed uh, chloride, uh, cyanide, fluoride, uh, sulfate and uh, sulfate. So uh, again, uh, in for these other parameters also, they have given the more specific uh, attention to category A and category D, which are related to uh, drinking and uh, others have the uh, cyanide standard is available for all the categories and uh, but others are uh, not available for every category uh, then uh, the uh, next category is regarding the heavy metals so uh, when it's come to the heavy metals they have listed uh, numerous uh, various amounts of uh, various uh, heavy metals and such as uh, zinc boron arsenic aluminium cadmium chromium uh, copper uh, iron total uh, lead and uh, manganese mercury nickel selenium uh, so such as so and and uh, for the lead they have incorporated that with the hardness as well so they have specified uh, the if the hardness is less than 120 for the lead there's a specific requirement and for the hardness is more than uh, 120 to 180 there's a specific uh, different category and if the hardness is one hundred more than 180 for the lead value they have given three uh, such categories and that is also mainly applying for category C which is uh, the aquatic life so uh, and for the this heavy metals also they have particularly uh, listed most of these uh, heavy metals uh, for category A and category D again for the drinking and for category E uh, they have listed some other uh, parameters as well which is uh, related to the irrigation and uh, agriculture because uh, heavy metals are specifically uh, uh, can affect the uh, irrigation water quality and uh, it can eventually uh, bioaccumulate in the uh, uh, in uh, living organisms uh, bodies so then um, they have uh, again listed uh, two more categories uh, into uh, organic micropollutants and microorganisms under the organic micropollutants they have identified the phenolic compounds oil and grease uh, surfactants 
and uh, MCPA and uh, pendimethylene. So these are the uh, organic matters. So uh, surfactants, they have into uh, surfactants for the surfactants. Uh, they have uh, for every category they have mentioned a value for a surfactant as thousand. And uh, again, uh, category A and D have been the most uh, addressed category under this organic micropollutant uh, uh, segment as well. So then on the finally, uh, the microorganisms where they have listed uh, total coliform and fecal coliform. And um, so for this one, they have uh, listed this value for category A and B, which is a simple treatment for drinking and bathing and recreational because these two types uh, again and also uh, they have listed uh, for B, uh, D as well, where are the general treatment for drinking. So uh, coliform microorganisms values are mentioned in the categories where the human touch the water directly. So uh, drinking, bathing and recreational are the categories where the human can interact or touch the uh, water directly. So uh, this is a brief introduction about the ambient quality standard. So uh, the Central Environment Authority again he uh, plays a pivotal role in enforcing this ambient water quality act. So uh, T CA is tasked to monitor and maintain water quality to ensure the compliance uh, with the standard and it uh, issues uh, directives to local authorities requiring them to take appropriate measures to prevent uh, pollution and protect uh, water uh, resources. So, uh, uh, compliance with this act is crucial to maintain the uh, health of Sri Lankan's water bodies and non-compliance can result significant environment damage affecting the public health and uh, as well as the economy. So, uh, act provides a framework for enforcement ensuring that all entities adhere to the prescribed standards and take necessary actions to prevent the uh, water pollution. So, um, uh, as a conclusion, uh, this Ambient Water Quality Act uh, of Sri Lanka is a vital piece of legislation aimed to protect the nation's water resources and uh, it is a responsibility of all stakeholders including authorities, industries and public to comply with these standards and contribute to uh, preserving the environment. So, uh, with that, uh, uh, we can conclude today's episode and so thank you very much for being with us and please do subscribe and like. Uh, our video and uh, again we highly valued your uh, comments in the uh, comment section as well so uh, see you all again in the next episode thank you